And we are back with another episode of the Clever Angle Podcast. I am your host, Tevin McGee. And as you might have noticed, I have taken a week off, man. I just kind of really needed some time to reset. Uh, a few different things happened, but we are back with another episode of the podcast. And I appreciate you guys' patience while I kind of did some reflection. So uh, this episode, I've been trying to drop for a good two or three years. Just it, it was in the phase when I wasn't being consistent with the podcast. And I was like, OK, I've got a few guests lined up uh, within the next few weeks. This will be a perfect time to kind of drop this content because I think it's something that needs to be out there. So things that I wish that I would have known in my 20s. So uh, for reference out there, I'm 33 now. So this is just things that I have learned and I wish I knew sooner uh, in my 20s. So number one on the list is patience. When you're in your 20s, patience is something that is almost impossible to find. Patience is something that was like the driving factor of why I started this podcast. All throughout college, I didn't have any patience. I remember trying to accelerate the rate at which I graduated because I thought that if I if it took me longer than four years to complete my degree, then it was somehow less impressive so i crammed a whole bunch of stuff in my last semester so i could graduate in in 2013 uh, with my bachelor's and i remember feeling empty inside and not really knowing what i was going to do next what kind of sparked me to do the podcast in the first place um to get a resource out there for people that might be struggling with this and taking that next step outside of uh, college because our lives are pretty much structured in a way that up until the end of college, you kind of know what your next thing is. So if I could go back, I would tell my younger self, just have patience. Things are going to work out. Do things that you enjoy. Really get to know yourself in your 20s and don't freak out if you're not on the same page or going at the same pace as somebody else. Um, number two is going to be fear of missing out or FOMO. So this is something I think we all struggle with, whether that's the 20s or, or the 30s, but I didn't really start to become at peace with the fact of, Tevin, you don't have to be involved in everything. You do not have to be involved in every party. You do not have to go to every event. You do not have to do, you don't have to be so concerned with what everybody is doing all the time. We live in a world that it's just constant highlights of everybody's life. Everybody, everybody's doing just constant mini dopamine hits. And you think that you should be involved. And I wasted a lot of money and a lot of time uh, chasing behind these temporary highs of not wanting to miss out. And um, there are so many times that I wish that I would have just stayed home instead of going out. Like I, I really didn't get much from the experience. So if I would have just focused on the things that really sparked joy with me, you know, um, I probably could have saved myself a lot of times and, and it's hard because even now at 33, you know, you get less time with your friends than you do in your twenties and you kind of take that for granted. So it can be hard to avoid, but this is a lesson that I, I truly encourage you guys to just take a second, take some time and just think, is this something that I'm truly going to regret or, or is it just something that's going to be fleeting and, and, you know, 10 minutes from now, you're not really going to miss that experience. Uh, number three is going to be learning about money and the dangers of debt. So if anybody is in student, uh, is, was a student in college, the majority of us had some kind of student loan debt. So, you know, you come out from 18 and, you know, I just went through puberty, you know, five, six years ago. So I'm still just kind of figuring out what I'm going to do, what I'm going to major in all these things. You know, you're focusing on these fun things of college. Like you've been sold this dream of, yeah, you go, you get the college experience. You're going to meet some of your best friends, which that is absolutely true. But something I wish that the school system would absolutely spend more time or start to develop a curriculum on is money and what debt means to your longevity of your life. So, you know, if you got to go to school to get the degree, 
and there's no way around getting it, um, 100%, you got to go to college. Like if you want to be a doctor, you got to go to college a hundred percent. But I would encourage you, especially if you're in your twenties or if, if, especially if you're in your twenties or if you're uh, a little bit sooner than that, like high school, junior high, start thinking about creative ways that you can pay for college. Your grades matter in high school. If you want to go to college, they matter. So if you're thinking about pursuing a degree that you might not necessarily need a degree for, look into some alternative uh, alternative options uh, before you decide to plunge into debt because I think it's become normal to to carry a student loan balance. It's been normal to get credit cards. It's been normal to do all of these things. But the ramifications, the lessons that that you didn't learn are going to slap you in the face very hard if you don't learn these financial lessons. So I encourage all of you parents out there, all of you people that are are, um, just now going into your college journey or just now living out on your own and you are thinking about getting a credit card and you're thinking about uh, going to school. Before you take on any of that of that debt, do some research, do some education uh, in the subject matter. I remember when I was a freshman at A-State, there was like this kind of like carnival type setup where there was a whole bunch of different booths uh, on campus and they were just telling you different things. And, you know, there was a booth that had pizza. So you're a broke college kid. So you want to get the pizza and you go over there and they say, hey, here's some free pizza. Do you want to sign up for a credit card or do this? And a lot of kids were just blindly signing up for these cards that are probably 30, 35% interest. And they really just prey on you not knowing these kinds of things and hoping that you just sign up for it, spend money that you don't have, and they can get you on the back end for interest. So learn about money. That's, that's a, that's a, that is a thing that is going to, of all the things on this list, learning about money is going to help you out the most in the long term. Because once you do decide to have a family, once you decide to buy a house, once you decide that you are ready to get a car, knowing about money, knowing about savings and emergency funds and debts and all of these things that are going to affect your adult life, you know, when you're in your 20s, you think that you're invincible. You think that nothing is going to come back to bite you. You think that you've got time. And I promise you, the illusion of time is something that we do not realize. Time is our most valuable resource. And if we just thought about that earlier, we could live a much more fulfilled life. So learn about money, learn about debt, especially if you are young. But I think this is something that everyone should know. So I'm reading, I will teach you to be rich. Um, right now it's a great financial resource and I'm finding a lot of value in the psychology of money is also a good book. So if you're interested in any of these resources, I'll leave the subscription down to a few of the financial books that kind of change my perspective and the way that I think about it, because mindset is a huge part of getting your finances in order. Okay. Number four, which is probably just as important as the money thing is prioritize your health. Just because you're 20, just because you're 18, just because you're 30 does not mean your health is a guarantee. We need to realize that we are, we only get one body to take care of us for the rest of our lives. So the things that you're doing, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to mess your liver up in in your 20s. It's not worth it to get addicted to nicotine in your 20s. There are so many people that I went to college with. There's so many people that are younger than me that I'm seeing at a rapid rate just in my own life, have health health conditions that they would have never thought about. You don't have to do something crazy. This isn't something that I'm telling you not to have fun or not to uh, enjoy sweets, but we have to realize the things that we are putting into our bodies. We have to realize the decisions that we are making um, are, are going to affect us for the next 50 to 60 years. So find you something that works for you. Moving your body, getting out into that into that sunlight. Take your dog for a an extra walk. Get some kind of routine that is going to work for you because I promise you prioritizing your health now is going to not only save you money, it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow you to have higher quality of life as you move on. 
it's not the fact that you're getting older is why you can't do the things that you did in high school. It's because you decide to put your body on the back burner. And by the time you're 30, 31 years old, um, you have put so many miles on your body in a negative way that you don't even realize that it, it, it can be corrected, but you don't even realize the damage that has been done to your body until you have to go to the doctor and, oh, yeah, you your ligaments in your knee or whatever it is. You know, you just, it's slowly over time you start to see these um, regressions in the things that you're able to do, but they can be corrected. So I'm telling you, the sooner the better, prioritize some kind of routine. I mean, I'm not any kind of expert, but I do have a degree in exercise science, and I'm thinking two to three times a week minimum of getting in the gym or some sort of exercise. And here's the thing. Just find something that you like to do. It doesn't have to be lifting weights. You know, I like playing tennis. Tennis is something that I do that helps me stay active, and taking my dogs for a walk is something that's low impact that you can do. Um that will help your overall longevity of health. And obviously your diet is a huge part of that. So everything in moderation, man, everything in moderation, you can't eat the same things that you were eating when you were 15, when you're 33, trust me, it sneaks up on you. It sneaks up on you fast. Um, number five is going to be your relationship status does not define you. So back to the whole social media thing, there is so much comparison in our everyday lives that we think that just because somebody else is getting married, that, that I need to be getting married and they rush into things. So I think that if we just take the time to do a self-evaluation on what do you want in your life and does this fit with another person right now? If the answer is yes, and you think that you are in a situation that where you are up for dating and finding that person, because that is one of the most rewarding things is finding your person and building a life with that person. But you don't think you don't need to think that you're a failure if you're not 24 and married, if you're not 31 and married, you need to be working on yourself in your 20s and getting yourself to where you're attracting the type of person that you would want to be. Um, in a relationship with and want to build a life with. So I think that the, um, the age in your, in your twenties, is just such a, um, self-discovery age that we just need to take the time, be with ourselves, increased, increase our skill set and, and the things that we got going on, you know, focus on these first four things, focus on your career, focus on saving money, focus on uh, getting yourself out of debt. So now you start to attract that good energy of a person that you will want to be in. But comparison is the thief of all joy. And I'm telling you, as long as you are not comparing yourself to other people and you are happy with the progress in your life, you are going to live a, a um, highly fulfilled life. And you are going to look back and, and think that it was at the pace that it needed to be. God doesn't make mistakes. Number six has been truly transformative for me, and that is going to be seeking mentors. Nobody gets through this life alone. Nobody. So seeking out the guidance of people that are doing the things that you want to do, someone that is like a big brother figure to you that can give you wisdom and guidance and that can help you get out of some of these pitfalls that we're talking about. You know, how different would your life be if when you're 17 and you're getting ready to sign up for student loans, you had a mentor of some sort, like whether that's a coach, uh, your, your uncle, your dad, whoever it is, somebody that has been around the block, somebody that has experienced some of the things that you've gone through and can help you from making the mistakes that they made. That can set your life on a complete different trajectory than you are normally headed on just by surrounding yourself with people that are going to make a positive impact impact on you. I've got several in my 30s now, and I wish I would have known these people in my 20s because it would have helped me save a lot of time. Um, I've got to shout out my buddy, Chikukure AK. 
I would consider him one of my best friends, one of my mentors, my brother as well. Uh, my, my good friend, Grant Long, these are all men that I can reach out to at any given point, ask for advice on things, know that they've been some through some of the same things that I've been through. They're, they're going through some of the same th struggles currently. And I value the, their opinion. They, they each have qualities and characteristics of things that I would want to be better at in my own life and surrounding myself with like a mastermind group of friends is a game changer for you in so many different areas of your life, whether that's your physical health, whether that's your spiritual health, whether that, or that's your financial health, whether that's, you know, you're, you're talking through getting a, a career and, and, and jobs and things like that, whether it's a cre creative outlet that you need advice on. Mentors will change your life. Justin Moody as well. My, uh, my former boss when I was in the warehouse, all of these are Caleb Shipley. The, the list goes on, but the point is these are people that are having a positive impact on my life. And if you don't have some of these people around, uh, you need to re-examine your friend group and the people that you're spending your time and energy on because you start to become like the people that you're around. Shout out to Ash Pulliam and Patrick Patterson as well. I don't want to leave anyone out that I communicate with on a regular basis, but yeah, um, seeking mentors was something that completely Nathan Knight is, is an inspiration as well. I, I would, I would consider him a, uh, a, a mentor as well, as far as, you know, he's doing the things that, that I would want to do as well. Um, so, uh, and it doesn't even have to be someone teaching you something. It's just getting yourself around like-minded people and trying to achieve the goals uh, that you've set out through the help of others. Cause once again, nobody gets to where they need to go by themselves. So that's number six. Number seven is time is your most valuable resource. And while you are young, don't think that you have all the time in the world. It's something that you can't buy more of. So spend it wisely. You can always get more money. You always can get another job. You will not be able to get your time back. So I'm not telling you not to enjoy your life because you need to enjoy your life. But one thing that I have found to be so rewarding in my 30s that I wish I would have spent more time doing in my 20s is spending just more intentional time with my parents, man. My dad and my mom have become some of my best friends. Um, they're people that I, I still look up to this day. And I spent so much time just out at you know, bars, clubs, you know, doing stuff that was just absolutely overrated, in my opinion. When I could have been spending that time with my family, and I really just appreciate it so much more now. And 30 is just a weird age because you are in this weird uh, stage of your life where your parents are getting older, you're starting to have kids, your friend group isn't as close as they, they were, everyone is moving in different directions. I'm one of the only um, people in my local friend group uh, that has kids. So my brother is, is just got engaged. I got another one of my buddies that is, uh, has been dating his girl for a while. So the time that we actually get to link up now and get to hang out is few and far between. And when we were all in this same crazy stage of life, like we just thought it would be, it would last forever. Like, man, I'm going to get to hang out with my brother and, and my friends like this forever. And then you wake up and you're in a different stage of life. So just really appreciate those times that when you have roommates and, you know, no one has any money and y'all are just sitting around talking, having a good time. Uh, life is precious, you know. How many times do you just have a good, genuine laugh with a friend now? When I was in my 20s, I felt like it happened every day. But now I really take the time to, to stop and appreciate when I'm having those sincere moments with my friends, with my family. And um, I, I encourage you to just think as, uh, of those people that are in your life, whether it's your grandmother, your mother, your brother. Take advantage of those of that time that you have with them because it is not guaranteed and you never know what tomorrow brings. So time is of the essence. Slow down and enjoy.
Number eight is practice gratitude. Being grateful for things is something that I think we're always um, in the process of learning better. But with the society that we live in now and this always wanting more, 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 you need to slow down and start to appreciate the things that you have, you know? Okay. Yeah. We might not be LeBron James living in Beverly Hills on the Los Angeles Laker, but we have a, a, a family that loves each other. We have a nice home around us that keeps us warm. We have dogs that appreciate us. We have all of our parents healthy. We have a, a great ecosystem of friends around us. I encourage everyone to just think about 10 things that they are grateful for and really appreciate where you are in life. Enjoy the journey to your destination and realize that this life is just a vapor in the grand scheme of things. We are so blessed to be able to live in this time where we have so much comfort and technology and so many things that make our lives so great. We live in the United States, which is one of the greatest countries, and we can we have the freedom to be able to pursue anything that we want to do. So practice gratitude, and I promise you will have a happier life. It's something that I'm constantly working on, and when I'm getting to these moods where I'm down on myself, I, I like to make a list of things that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for being able to talk on a platform, even if no one is listening to me, I'm grateful to, for the opportunity to get to have a, a, a space where I can get my thoughts out to people. And even if this just reaches one person, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the connections that I've made in college. I'm grateful for my job. I'm grateful for my beautiful wife that works so hard for our family. And I'm grateful for two beautiful, amazing wonderful daughters. I'm grateful to have my brother and, and friends that, that accept me for me. I think that is a rare thing these days. And I think that no matter what situation that you are in life, you have something that you can be grateful for. You have something that you can appreciate and I encourage you to do so. And that kind of goes into number nine, which is be present. Time stops for no one. That's starting to become a, a recurring theme of things that I've learned in my 20s is it will be gone before you know it. I vividly remember playing my last game of basketball in high school, realizing this was the last time I was going to play competitive basketball. I remember the sadness that was in that room, and I was just soaking it up. I was never the greatest basketball player. But, man, was it awesome to be a part of that team. We were at Four City in an away game. That was my last game. That was after senior night. That was the last time I was going to be able to put on an Elton Raiders jersey. And I can still feel the emotion. And now I look back. That was like 15 years ago. It, and I can still remember everything that was happening. I remember shaking my coach's hands and them telling me that it was a pleasure, you know, getting to coach me. And, and like I said, I wasn't good, but I, I appreciated just being on the team around the guys. And if this is you and you're in junior high and you're upset about your playing time and you, you know, you, you let these petty things get, and not just basketball, just things in general. You got a grudge that you're holding uh, against your, your sibling or you are upset with your parents for something. Just realize time goes by so fast. You will go from 15 to 33 in a blink of an eye. And by the time you've realized how much time has passed, another two or three years has passed. And you just have to just take the time to slow down, be present, hug your mom, go see your grandma. Go to that funeral. There's a quick story I'll tell about one of my, my good friends. He used to be my boss at Outback Steakhouse. And I remember when he first came to manage us, he was about the age that I am now. 
Unfortunately, he passed away at the young age of 41 years old. And I remember going to his funeral in Memphis and there was so much sadness. I cried and I wept like a baby because me and him used to talk about the things that we were going to do. And the reality is we never know how much time we have. So hug that person. Tell that person you like them. Go ask your boss for a raise. Go on that walk. Sign up for that 4K because you never know. You don't know when your time is up. Be present in the moment. If you are talking to somebody, if you're at lunch with one of your good friends, put your phone away. Be present. That could be the last time y'all go to lunch for five years. You never know what curveballs life is going to throw at you. So you, all you have is right now to be present in that moment, in that moment to make a difference, to change the trajectory of your life. You never know when the last time is, you know, I always, I always think about that. And I, I don't know why I always use pickup basketball as like a, as a example, but I'm a guy that plays a lot of pickup basketball, still really enjoy the sport. And I think to myself, you know, think about the last time I, you played pickup basketball. When you were walking out of the gym and you were putting your shoes in your car and you were driving off. Did you think that that was going to be the last time you played pickup basketball? It could have been. Or did you think when you were driving away from the gym, I'm not going to do this for another five years? The, the chances are probably not, but life gets in the way. So just be present because it could be over just like that. You could, you could leave the gym and never get to play basketball again in your life. You could leave school and that could be the last time you saw somebody that you went to college with. You could leave that job and you can never talk to somebody that you spent the last five years with. Be present. Make the most out of the day that you have, which is right now. Number 10 is the journey is more important than the destination. Some things take a lifetime to learn. So fall in love with the journey instead of wishing you were at your destination. This goes back to me in college. Man, I was so just focused on being a college graduate. I was rushing through the days. I was rushing through the classes. I was rushing through an experience in my life that I needed to just be enjoying the, the, the journey. Enjoying the time and the effort, enjoying the relationships. How many times do you see somebody on social media and say, man, I haven't seen that person since college. I haven't reached out to that person since college. I wonder how they're doing. Enjoy the journey. It's all that we have. The only two things that are guaranteed in this life, if you're in it, is that you will be born and you will die. Everything in between that is the journey. The human experience is something that doesn't need to be rushed. Enjoy it. If we're lucky, we will be old one day. And you'll be talking about and reminiscing on the times when you were able-bodied and you were able to do things. you won't always be in your prime. There's going to be different seasons of your life that you'll enter in and it's going to be filled with happiness and sadness and everything in between. So don't rush it. Enjoy it. Take your time. Hug your loved ones. Enjoy the journey. Number 11 is going to be progress over perfection. I think that we all think that we have to be perfect all the time. I know I do. I struggle with this, especially with putting my content out into the world. I think, man, I'm not going to post an episode this week because people are going to find it dumb. 
No one's going to resonate with it. Why do I think that I could be a podcaster full time? Those inner thoughts of that try to keep you safe because taking a risk and doing something outside of your comfort zone is scary. So your body fights against it and tells you that it's not good enough. And maybe it's not, but post it anyway. Maybe you don't know everything, but do it anyway. Pursue it anyway. Ask the question anyway. Because if you don't, you're going to be locked into a place where you are just in perpetual fear. And you're never going to make any progress. Just by starting, you start to learn that you will make mistakes, but you will make progress. You will get to your goal. No, it won't be perfect. Even your best videos, there's probably something that you can improve on. But it goes back to the thing that we were just talking about, and that's enjoying the journey. Post the content. Write the letter. Hug the friend. Go to the dinner with the person that you haven't seen. Tell your family that you love them. Make progress towards something. Step out of side of your comfort zone. Take action. Action is much more important than the destination. Taking action is what gets you to the destination. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. You just have to make progress. And that's something I wish that I would have known early on in my life. And the last thing that I'll leave you guys with is a small group of real, true friends is better than a huge group of acquaintances. The funny thing about this is, I was talking to my brother about this the other day. Or maybe it was AK or TJ or somebody. I was talking to somebody about this. Actually, I think it was Patrick. I think I was talking to Patrick about this, but that's beside the point. If I would have got married when I was right out of high school, the people that would that would have been in my wedding would have been X, Y, Z. If I would have got married while I was in college, the group of, of people would have changed slightly. It would have been some of the same people. If I would have got married post-college, right after college, it changes a little bit. And if I actually had my vow renewal about two years ago, and it was a completely different group of people. There's some outliers in there. There's people that are always going to, that was through all of these things. But what it made me realize is as you go through life, you're going to gain friends and you're going to lose friends. Your group of people that are going to rock with you through the entirety of your life, the entirety of the different seasons of your life, is going to be very few people. And that's okay. There's some people that you meet and that relationship, that friendship is only going to last five years and you'll be Facebook friends and you'll like each other's posts, but you neither one of you will make that effort to continue on with that relationship and that's okay you're gonna have a group of people a small group of people that you're gonna meet that y'all are going to bond with and those are gonna be the people that you do life with and they're gonna have your back no matter what in every um version of my groomsmen there was always a for sure four people, no matter what. And those four people are the people that are on my list for when I'm feeling down. They're on my list for when I want to tell somebody, somebody exciting news. They're the people that I call mentors and friends and family. They're the people I'll get a gift for. And you start to realize that a small group of people that are truly rooting for you, that are going to listen to your podcast, they're going to watch your YouTube video, they're going to like your post on social media, they're going to support you in the fundraiser that you're doing for your kids, they're going to be at your kid's birthday party, they're going to be at your birthday party, you're going to be at their birthday party. That is such a small, intimate group. And that's okay. Your friends are going to change. Your family's going to be forever. And there's going to be a small group of people that are going to be with you. And 
instead of trying to please everybody, just lean into that. Because we don't have a lot of time. We never did. It doesn't matter if you do these things or you don't do these things. There's an expiration date on all of us. So why not get the best out of life with the best people? Be in the moment. Be present. Get our finances in order. Leave a legacy for your kids and your next generation. Find you somebody that you want to spend this life with. And let's make it meaningful. Guys, I hope you appreciated this episode. Things I wish I knew in my 20s. I really enjoyed um, getting this out here to you guys. And once again, we'll be back next week with another episode. Thank you for being patient with me as uh, I'm in a truly busy season of my life. We'll be back next week um, with one of two episodes, either the T.C. Burr episode. Um, we've got that scheduled to be recorded on Tuesday or the Judd Alsop episode. But we will be back with the regular scheduled interview program. And I appreciate you guys rocking with me. Um, if you would be inclined, like us on Instagram, follow us on YouTube. We're, we're at the, the Clever Angle, at The Clever Angle on all social media platforms. So thank you for your time as always. And until next time, peace.